Hey everyone, recently OnePlus has been expanding beyond flagships and flagship killers into mid-range territory. Their first attempt was the OnePlus Nord, and this phone proved to be very popular, but it isn't available globally. Riding on the tails of that success, they've decided to release the OnePlus Nord N10 5G, and this one will be available in North America. But will it win over buyers in the mid-range? I'm Angie for GSM Marina, and this is our review of the OnePlus Nord N10 5G. The Nord N10 has a rather average design, which seems at odds with OnePlus's Never Settle slogan. It has a plastic build and the back is quite shiny, a fingerprint magnet, and very slippery. The plastic seamlessly wraps around the phone, though the frame isn't the most comfortable to hold if you're using it for extended periods of time without a case. The N10 has Gorilla Glass 3 on the front, which is less prone to scratching but more prone to breaking. So I guess you should really buy a case and a tempered glass protector for this one. That aside, thanks to the material, it's rather light in the hand and it's a bottom-heavy phone, so it won't tip out of your hand. It has tactile power and volume buttons, and you'll find a card slot that can hold either two SIM cards or a SIM and a microSD card. What you won't find is a physical alert slider, which makes it the first OnePlus phone without one. Honestly, you'll find that its design language resembles Oppo and Realme much more than OnePlus. Since the screen is an LCD panel, there's no chance for this phone to have an under-display fingerprint reader, which is why it's on the back instead. To our surprise, there were inconsistencies with reliability until a recent update fixed it, though it's still slow. That's very disappointing for a phone released this year, and even more so for a OnePlus phone which traditionally has had lightning-fast unlocking. On the front, you'll find a tall 6.49-inch IPS LCD with a Full HD Plus resolution and a punch hole in the upper left corner. It isn't bad, but it is a noticeable step down from the Nord's AMOLED display. In general, it's average for the price range. Still, it's driving the point home that OnePlus is cutting costs everywhere they can. The display has a 90Hz refresh rate which feels very smooth, but it still doesn't look as good as an OLED display. The screen got a max brightness of 440 nits, which was alright, and a minimum brightness of 2.4 nits, which is very good for not blinding you in the dark. Sunlight legibility is alright for the price. As far as the colors are concerned, they're quite cool out of the box, but you can make the phone's color reproduction more accurate if you bump the slider 5 eighths of the way to the warm option. On the other side of media consumption, you'll find a headphone jack and a dual speaker setup here. I say dual speaker because there's no channel separation which would make it stereo. It had good sound quality and it got very good loudness on our audio tests. If you're more into wireless headphones, you'll really like the fact that this phone supports Bluetooth 5.1. The Nord N10 has a 4,300 mAh battery and got a very good 99 hours of endurance on our battery life tests. Charging is even better and you can get a 66% charge in half an hour and a full charge in 52 minutes. OnePlus software also has an optimized charging option, which allows the phone to learn your charging habits and can reduce your overnight charging loads. The N10 has 6GB of RAM and the Snapdragon 690, which supports sub 5GHz 5G networks. It has similar single core performance to phones that have the Snapdragon 765G chipset, and its multi core scores were similar to phones like the Reno 3 Pro 5G. Day to day, you'll find that this phone is snappy and responsive. The processor is tuned more for battery efficiency than performance, and as a whole, it strikes a good balance between battery life and power. The Nord N10 has Android 10 with Oxygen OS on top. Sadly, OnePlus is only planning to update this phone up until Android 11, and then it'll offer two years of security updates. This is something to keep in mind if you're really after longevity in your phones. Other than that, the software is mostly the same as on other OnePlus phones. There is no always-on display, but you can set the screen to activate when you lift up the phone or when you get notifications. The launcher is simple and straightforward, and you'll find quite a few customization options. You can switch from light to dark themes, choose your ambient clock style, select an accent color, change up the icons, and switch your font. One thing we liked was Hidden Space, which lets you hide apps which you don't want to appear in the app drawer. The OS also supports parallel apps so you can have two accounts on a single device. 
The OnePlus Nord N10 has a quad camera setup with a 64 megapixel main sensor with autofocus, an 8 megapixel ultrawide snapper, a 2 megapixel macro cam, and a 2 megapixel monochrome camera. During the day, the phone takes 16 megapixel snaps that look good overall. In ideal lighting, colors are vibrant and detail is quite good. In more challenging shooting conditions, the image processing tries to compensate too much and you'll get washed out colors and shaded areas that don't look shaded. That's why we'd say that the camera was mostly consistent, but not always. White balance varied between shots from time to time and sometimes contrast was great while other times it wasn't enough. There's an option to shoot photos in the full 64 megapixel resolution, though you should know that if you're uploading to social media, they'll get compressed anyway. That said, the full resolution shots had more natural contrast, which we prefer sometimes. There's no dedicated zoom camera, so if you want to zoom in, you'll be getting a crop from the main sensor. If you choose to go the other direction and use the ultrawide, you'll get colors and white balance that are in line with the main cameras. The dynamic range is more limited and the detail isn't as plentiful, but that's unsurprising since the ultrawide sensor is smaller. The monochrome snapper isn't just for depth sensing, which isn't always the case on mid-range phones. It produced more natural mid-tones and shadows than what you would get if you desaturated a photo shot by the main camera. There's also a 2 megapixel macro camera. Shots were nicely exposed and had about as much detail as you would expect from this type of sensor. Portrait shots look alright, but the bokeh looked better with more light. The framing was more wide than what we're used to, and there's no tighter crop option in the phone's camera UI, so you'll just have to do it manually after you take the shot. When the light gets low, you can use Nightscape on both the main and ultra-wide cameras. We found that they were a little cropped in when compared to regular low-light snaps. Without Nightscape, the camera doesn't do well. As for the ultra-wide, the camera simply isn't suitable for low-light photography, and Nightscape didn't do much to help. The Nord N10 has a 16 megapixel camera and the hole punch on the front. It wasn't great at metering exposure and there was less contrast than what we would have liked, but overall shots were alright. If you're keen on videography, you should know that the Nord N10 supports 4K at 30fps on the main camera and Full HD at 30fps on the ultrawide. EIS is available for all video modes unless you're shooting a 2 times zoom video or capturing footage at 60 frames per second. 4K videos had exposure that once again was too bright for our taste. The dynamic range wasn't impressive, but details are okay and noise is quite low. Full HD footage on the main camera was pretty much the same, but with less noise and a slightly better dynamic range. The ultrawide camera had a noticeable drop in sharpness and detail, and colors weren't as vibrant as those on the main camera. Sadly, it's pretty clear that the OnePlus Nord is better than the Nord N10 5G in almost every possible way, including, in my opinion, the name. But if you live in a market where the Nord is not available, then this phone makes a lot more sense. The Nord N10 has an uninspired design, an average display, a slow fingerprint reader, and it will only get security updates past Android 11. Really, it doesn't seem like what we've come to expect from OnePlus. The bright side is that it's very affordable, it has fantastic battery life and fast charging, and even nighttime shots are pretty good. If you're chasing an affordable 5G phone, then maybe you should take a look at this one. But if 5G is not a priority for you and you can live with 4G, then there are a lot of other phones that are also super easy on the wallet. Thanks for watching everyone, stay safe, and I'll see you guys next time.